Welcome to the Better Wallet Podcast, a podcast where we talk to everyday people who have changed their lives through managing their money. We talk about their money journeys, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Welcome to the next episode of the Better Wallet Podcast. As you guys know, Better Wallet Podcast is all about demystifying the topic of money. Today, we are going to talk about the number one mistake that a lot of people make when it comes to their finances. And no, it's not budgeting. No, it's not investing, right? They are very important, but this one is extremely important. And the reason why is if you don't do it correctly, you could be giving away free money to someone that you probably don't like. So let's get into it. So let's start off with a story. And then from there, we'll transition into what that number one financial mistake is. So here's the start of the story. You go work at a new job right? You're excited. You're, you're going in, you do orientation, right? And everything is great. And then they hand you a packet from HR for the benefits office. And they say, John, or whatever your name is, you now need to set up your 401k. You know, you might need to set up different accounts, right? They might have like a group life insurance policy, for example. And when you're going, you're filling out these documents, they're going to ask you a really important question that you'll likely overlook because they don't circle it. They don't highlight it, right? They're not telling you to pay any special attention to it. So if you're like any normal human being, you probably will either omit, as in like you don't actually fill out anything in this area, or you'll completely, you know, just put someone in there that, you know, is top of mind, right? And that is the beneficiary section. Why is that important? So again, let's go back to the story. You go, you fill it out, you put in your current husband, for example. Your current husband, he's great, right? Like there's no problems, everything's dandy. You fill him in and you say, okay, well, if I were to pass, I want to make sure my husband, current husband or current wife, whoever it might be, receives that money from my 401k, from my group life insurance policy, whatever it might be. And everything is great. Here's what normally happens. Well, in a situation where things go awry. You go, you set that up. Life goes on, right? We're busy. We're starting this new job. Everything's great. The kids are growing up. And then next thing you know, maybe you go through a divorce, right? Divorces happen, you know? Like it it happens more often than none when it comes to marriage. And when that divorce happens, you're not thinking about your 401k for the most part, right? You're not really thinking about who the beneficiaries are on your 401k. So what happens? You go through that divorce, the financial turmoil that comes with divorce, the mental turmoil that comes with divorce, right? There's a lot that goes along with that. And you're not really thinking about your 401k, right? So if there were an unfortunate situation where let's say you pass away and then, you know, the judge or the executor or the estate planner, I should say, like they're looking at your estate. So here's a question I want you to ask yourself. If you were to pass away, your ex-husband is still on your 401k or group life insurance policy as the beneficiary, who gets the money in that situation? Some of you guys might be like, oh, my kids, oh, my mom and dad, your ex-husband's going to get that money. Your ex-wife is going to get that money. Why? Because you list them down as a beneficiary and you did not change it when there was a major event that happened within your life. When I used to be a financial advisor, this was the number one mistake when it came to estate planning, right? Planning for your estate, planning, unfortunately, for a, a situation where you could potentially die. Right. And we need to figure out where we're going to actually allocate that money to different beneficiaries, like who should be getting the money at the end of the day. Right. So a lot of times we think about the estate of, you know, Michael Jackson, you know, these celebrities out there. You think of like Tina Turner, you think of Elvis Presley. Right. These are very public situations that happen with celebrities. Because they want to figure out, the estate plan wants to figure out where this money is going to be going. It could be really messy if you do not have the right designations being a beneficiary, right? So I'm going to get off my stepping stool with that. But 
it's extremely important to update your beneficiaries. Here's another question. Let's say you have your ex-husband as the beneficiary, right? And you end up passing away. And let's say you have a trust or you have a trust designation, or let's say you have a will and it says, well, all my money needs to go to, needs to go to my parents or it needs to go to my sister, right? Who gets the money in that situation? You might be thinking, hey, like it has to be the trust. You know, the money should go to the trust, right? It's written in, I pay for all this money to, you know, have this trust written up. You might be thinking, oh, the will should supersede or trump the benefits designation. That can be further from the truth. The person who's going to get the money is the one who is listed as a beneficiary on your 401k. And I'm saying 401k, 403b, TSA, whatever you might be using. So that's why it's really important because what the financial advisor is going to do or what the judge is going to do is ask a very simple question. Who is the beneficiary on the account? And without a doubt, they're probably going to transfer all that money to the person that you had listed unless something catastrophic happens or there's a significant reason why it should be going to someone else. So that is why it's really important. So you might be asking, Mark, okay, this is great. Perfect. I know I need to update the person who I designated as a beneficiary, but who should I designate, right? Things you want to think about. You want, first and foremost, to think about someone that you would actually want to give that money to, right? So if you and your Uncle Joe aren't on good terms, you probably shouldn't give it to your Uncle Joe. If you and your mother or dad, you guys really don't really vibe with each other, maybe you're estranged, right? If you're in that situation, then maybe you don't want to give it to your mom or your dad, right? You need to think about someone that you trust, someone that you want to give that money to. And then I think also really importantly, you want to give it to someone that could help take care of your estate. If you're in a situation where you owe different bills, right? Like there are certain expenses, right? They could take the money from the 401k in order to pay for things like funerals and late bills that you have to pay or debt that you might unfortunately have like after you pass away. So you want someone that you would trust to go about, you know, doing that and doing it in the right manner. So another question that I get all the time is, hey, how about I label my minor children on that? You don't want to do that. There's a lot of different reasons on why you want to do that. But the big reason is because they are not an adult, right? So if you're putting down a minor ch a child, like let's say you have a five-year-old, if you are listing them down as a beneficiary, likely that's not going to uphold in court. Frankly, the Fidelities and the Vanguards of the world that tend to have 401k assets and the 401k platform that you might be using to set all this up, they should ask you, how old is this person? And likely they probably won't give you the option to actually put that person down. That's going to be the first line of defense. But if you are able to put that down, do not put a minor child. You're better off having that person be a trust, right? You could set up a trust and make that the beneficiary of your 401k or really any of your assets, right? So when you were to pass away, that money then goes into the trust and from there, it gets dispersed to whoever you write into the trust. So that is extremely important. Again, let me reiterate all this. When you are setting up your 401k, you want to make sure your beneficiary is the person that you really want down. It shouldn't be your ex-husband. It shouldn't be your ex-wife unless you really like them, right? Like you guys may be like divorced and you guys you know, say, hey, like we're better off this way, but we want to stay friends. But then you guys are really close still. That's probably the only situation where I would like continue to put down an ex-wife or ex-husband. Otherwise, you probably want to remove them out of that, right? So from there, also, let me put this in here. You want to also tell them that, right? So if you put down someone, let it be your Uncle Joe, your mom, or your dad, I think it'll be worth a text or a call and just say, hey, like I put you down as a beneficiary. I'm sure they're not going to complain about it, but it's going to be really important that you go about doing that. Additionally, they might, the platform, like as you're signing up for your 401k and it's asking for your beneficiaries, it might ask you for their social security number. So you might have to call or text them anyhow, preferably call or even talk in person to get their social. That way you can add that in there. Because again, when people pass away, that is when things get really hairy. Like 
I'm sure with a lot of the like the celebrities out there that it might seem on paper or on TV they have the perfect life and everyone gets along as kumbaya and all that stuff. When someone passes away and it has to do with a lot of money, that's when you see a lot of fights happening because people want to figure out, okay, what's my cut? Unfortunately, that happens, right? Un after the mourning process, after the burial, all that stuff, it's like, okay, well, what are we going to do with the car? What are we going to do with the money? What are we going to do with you know the house, right? They're thinking about that. And that could be a really sad and unfortunate time in a family's life because they have to go through all of that. Not only the mental trauma that you go through when you lose someone, but also the financial trauma of like trying to figure out how you're gonna divide up assets. So that is extremely important. The next question I normally get is, when should I update my beneficiaries? Or when should I be looking at my beneficiaries to make sure they're up to date? Think about this. It should always be after a major life event or the best practice that I tell people is to look at it every year, preferably, you know, end of the year while, you know, November, December, when that pops up, because that's what they call open enrollment, meaning that's the time that you're able to switch your medical plan. You're able to switch your dental plan, your vision, right? For your employer, if you work a nine to five, that's normally when you're able to go about making those changes. So the best practice would be as you're going, you're changing your medical plan. Maybe you want something that is a little bit more comprehensive. Just take a look at your beneficiaries. Do it every single year. Take a look at it. Make sure it is up to date based off of your current life. Because we go through a lot of phases in life. One day you're in a relationship. One day you might not. One day you like this person. Sometimes you love them. Like, you know, that happens, right? Your kids might be getting older. So I think the best practice is to look at it every single time or every year around open enrollment season, which is normally around October, November, December, depending on your company, right? And then the other one that I mentioned first was a major life event, meaning you have a kid, right? You shouldn't list a kid as a beneficiary, but it's a, a consideration on where you might want to put that money. Maybe you're more trusting of someone who is a really, really close friend to make sure that the money's going to the children versus someone that you originally had who only you only really trust them to make sure that you're taken care of, right? So in that situation, you might want to make a switch. So having a child going through a divorce or going through a divorce after the divorce, when you get remarried, right? These are all major life events. Maybe get a home, right? You want to think about who the beneficiaries are for, again, your life insurance. So again, like go look at it after every major life event and at least annually, assuming that you don't have life events annually, which you probably don't, that's the time that you want to be looking at your beneficiaries for your 401k, for your group life insurance policy, whatever it might be. Those are the times that you want to look at your beneficiaries because again, if you do not update your beneficiary, that money is going to go to someone that you probably don't like. <laughs> it could be an ex-husband. It could be an ex-wife. You know, It could be someone that, you don't have a personal relationship with anymore, right? So that's the reason why you want to go about updating it because if you don't, you're just passing that money on to them and people always forget, and I'm going to reiterate, the beneficiary on your 401k, on your group life insurance policy that you have with your employer, that is going to trump anything that's in a will, anything that's in the trust and financial advisors and executives or financial advisors and estate planners they know that the beneficiary designation is probably the biggest 800 pound gorilla in the room when someone is to pass away and people are looking for the money, right? Unfortunately, in that situation. So my homework to you guys, I want you to look at your designation for your retirement plans, not only your retirement plans, also your brokerage accounts, anything where you have an investment, you want to make sure that the designations are what you want them to be. The beneficiaries are what you want them to be. Your group life insurance policies, right? Look at all of that because you want to make sure those are updated so you're not giving free money to someone that you might not know as well or you might not be as close with, right? Feel free to put me down. I'm joking, kind of. Um, but you want to make sure that is updated for who you want it to be. So that is my homework to you guys. 
if you found any value in this podcast episode, in this YouTube episode, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do me a favor and leave a review, leave a rating wherever you're listening to this podcast, YouTube episode. Make sure you leave a rating on that platform because the benefit here is that the more ratings, the more comments and reviews, right? That helps us to get to more and more people in order to change your financial life. Just the other day, I had a student who was able to pay off their debt. They're completely debt free. And it stemmed from the fact that, you know, they listened to the podcast and from there they said, okay, well, I'm going to go and sign up for his course. And then from there, he was able to build his investment portfolio and also go about paying off all of his debt enough so where he's completely debt free. And he has the best problem that you could ever have in the world. And that's having a lot of money and not sure what to do with it. But because he's a student, a financially bulletproof student, we're going to make sure that he is designing his portfolio to meet his financial goals. So again, please leave a review, leave a rating. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next episode of the Better Wallet Podcast. Deuces. Thanks for tuning in to the Better Wallet Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you found any value, we'd appreciate a rating and review.